Welcome into Drew Daily Diamond for Wednesday, October 9th, 2024. Red hot 12 and 2, guys. 86% heading into the Tuesday night slate. But we got Wednesday slate coming for you guys. Hopefully, keep the winning ways coming your way. Two MLB picks, two MLB playoff selections, and a solo college football on today's card for the Hump Day special here. Drew's Daily Diamond going live on the Wager Talk YouTube channel. Let me know in the comments below what your picks are for tonight, where you agree, where you disagree, all is welcome. Smash that like button if you're liking the content. As we got first game up, 3.08 Eastern time. I said tonight, actually today, for the first game up, nationally televised on TBS. From the Motor City, it's the Detroit Tigers hosting the Cleveland Guardians. Alex Cobb on the hill for Cleveland. Looks like an opener, yet uh, still too be determined for the Tigers. Minus 105, pick them price on each time. On each side, total of seven. This is Detroit's first home playoff game in over a decade, almost exactly a decade. It was October 5th, 2014, last time they played here. So Motor City going to be a great atmosphere here for the daytime action. And I say opener, you know, bulk innings for Detroit. It's not necessarily a bad thing for them. Really, guys, they've been doing this a bunch of their games since what the end of July with obvious success. They got hot down the stretch, making the playoffs finding their way uh, here to this round. And looking at the Cleveland side of things, breaking it down on the field, we get Alex Cobb on the hill for start of the season. That's it. So we don't have a huge sample size for the Cleveland starter. He had hip surgery, then a nerve issue in his shoulder. Uh, he was traded from the Giants to the Guardians, had, had a blister issue as well. I don't necessarily think it's that bad of a thing, though. I mean, the four starts of kind of like early midseason form for him. And sure enough, the velocity has been there. 94, 95 miles per hour. He actually carried a perfect game into the sixth inning his last time out. So he's not necessarily a guy I'm looking to go against. He does have playoff experience with the Rays, granted a, a, a bunch of years ago. But still, he's been here before. He's a guy I would actually look to be betting on. Talked about the Detroit pitching you know likely Brant Herter getting getting some innings uh Detroit's got a good bullpen uh actually if you go my my numbers show they're the best bullpen in baseball over the last five weeks but the thing here is Cleveland's bullpen has been good as well they're top five both teams are here for a reason it's a battle of the two two of the three youngest teams in Major League Baseball found that interesting the Tigers actually averaging just 26 years of age um, but the number three youngest is Cleveland as well. So we'll see if that uh, comes comes into fruition here. Series tied, one game apiece. This is a really important game, obviously, for both teams, but really for Cleveland. If they're looking to avoid uh, Scooble again, likely in game five, they're going to need to sweep both games here in Detroit. Overall, guys, I think Cleveland's the better lineup. I like Alex Cobb in this spot. It's a tough one overall, but at the pick em price tag, I think it's a little short on the Cleveland side. So we're going to start off here. Guardians over Tigers in the Motor City. We'll move to the night slate up next. The other playoff game that we're talking here. 7.08 Eastern time on TBS as well. New York Yankees and Kansas City Royals. Seth Lugo going for the Royals. Clark Schmidt for the Bronx Bombers. Minus 110. That is the Yankees as the road favorite. Total of eight. So another tight spread here. Yankees just laying 10 cents. Series also tied a game apiece. One thing I'm bringing into this series is they're going from Yankee Stadium in the first two games. Now to Kansas City in Kauffman Stadium for the next two games. And what that's doing is that's going from one of the most friendly hitter ballparks in Major League Baseball to one of the most friendly pitchers ballparks in all of Major League Baseball. So Bringing that factor into it, I look at Clark Schmidt here first off for the Yankees. He He's a guy, he's making his first career postseason start, former first rounder out of South Carolina. The former Gamecock had 16 starts, great numbers overall, sub 2-9 ERA. He, did, he also did not face the Kansas City Royals lineup. That could be a plus. But he's a guy that had reverse home road splits. It points to the positive in this situation. Actually, his slugging percentage against was more than 150 points lower when pitching outside of Yankee Stadium. So I think we actually bring in the ballpark factors here um, to to the positive for the Yankees starter. And you look at it in his ERA, he had a 4-5 ERA in Yankee Stadium, just 
just a 1-3 ERA when pitching on the road. So I would look for Clark Schmidt to actually have a, a, a solid start here. He's up against Seth Lugo, also a great season overall, the Kansas City number two starter. He just went, what, four and a third in the wild card round, beating the Baltimore Orioles in that start, just giving up one earned run. Uh, not necessarily a guy I'm looking to go against by by any means, but up against the Yankees lineup where they're going to go with a, the same or similar lineup likely as game one where they they won against Michael Waka because, you know, the, the righty that they're facing. They also had an off day yesterday and the day before. Yes, the Yankees lost four to two to the Royals. But we do got to give a tip of our cap to the to the Yankees bullpen. Five and a third scoreless innings after giving up the four runs the starter did. Uh, so this this Yankees bullpen has been hot. They got the off day as well. Everybody should be ready to go. Last thing here, guys, and it could be important. The Royals have not played at home in the K since September 22nd, like two and a half weeks. They haven't played a home game. And in that homestand, they got swept 0-6 by the Tigers and the Giants. So it's a tough one. I mean, it, it, it really is with them coming back home. Also an interesting note here, guys. Three of the four teams left in the American League are all from the American League Central. The Tigers, the Guardians, the Royals. The Yankees went 24-7 and against the, the AL Central in the uh, regular season, including five and two against KC now six and three, including the uh, playoffs. So, Hey, all of that leading up to, I think 10 cents is short here, guys. I wouldn't be surprised if the Yankees take money as well before first pitch primetime game on TBS. Let's go with the Yankees minus one ten right now over the Royals. Got one game left. The solo college football game coming your way. A reminder, if you could comment below, it helps grow the show, helps the algorithm. Smash that like button as well, guys. Love chiming in there with you as well. Hearing your picks, where you agree, where you disagree, all is welcome. Premium picks available. Wagertalk.com, 5% max limit going on Thursday night in college football. If you want to check that out. Also got a package. Uh, huge discount for the rest of the year. You get college football, NFL, Major League Baseball, all the way through and college basketball right around the corner all the way through uh the end of the calendar year december 31st so check that out drew martin wagertalk.com all right last game up 7 30 eastern conference usa nationally televised college football game new mexico state and jacksonville state we are seeing the gamecocks of jacksonville state minus 20 point home favorites 59 being the total New Mexico State comes in one and four straight up and against the spread. Jacksonville State, uh, they had a tough start to it. Three straight losses, but they have won their last two games. Breaking down the schedule, you can see why. Tough start, Coastal Carolina and Louisville. They also had a tough loss to Eastern Michigan. Their head coach, Rich Rodriguez, he's a guy, you know, pedal to the metal. He's going to try to score as much as, as much as he can. I think it actually plays into this handicap. They won their last two games against lesser competition over Kennesaw State and Southern Miss. They beat Southern Miss 44 to 7. They beat Kennesaw State 63 to 24. Their quarterback Tyler Huff, Trey Stewart, their running back, they're two great athletes. They got a lot of rush yards on the year. And sure enough, in those last two games against lesser competition, they cashed both of them by over 50 against the spread points combined. Meaning they're being underpriced here, guys. This is a situation where Jacksonville State will look to run it up. They are at home. New Mexico State coming in. Hey, it's a tough job for Tony Sanchez. He's the former UNLV head coach from a few years ago. He took over after New Mexico State had that kind of talent drain to Vanderbilt. We just saw what Vanderbilt did against Alabama. They lost their quarterback, Pavia. He followed the uh, former offensive coordinator. I don't like this spot. Las Cruces to Jacksonville, Alabama. That's not an easy trip. Now, granted, Jacksonville State's only playing off of five days rest playing last Friday. But still, guys, Jacksonville State with that offense, I think they run it up here. We'll lay the 20 points. Jacksonville State, the Gamecocks win by more than three touchdowns. In recap, we're on Jacksonville State minus the 20. We are on the Cleveland Guardians pick em price tag and the New York Yankees minus 110. That's going to do it for Drew's Daily Diamond. We'll be back tomorrow. Come back and join us for the Thursday slate, breaking it down, NFL, college football, and Major League Baseball. Thanks for tuning in. Smash that like button, comment below, cash those tickets. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday.